same with the directrix. Okay, so let's graph what we have so far. So one, two, one, two, three. There's the vertex. And I know it's opening to the right because it's positive. I like standard form. Standard form is where x and y are on the same side. I like it. Uh, whenever I have y equals, that's called slope intercept. And y minus y1 equals m x minus x1 is called point slope because they give you a point and a slope. Graph the equation. All right, so I've got this information now. Here's the answer to example two. This is your original figure that you should have graphed. Notice how the points are labeled A, B, C, and D. It's very important that you label them the way that they're specified. And then once you reflect it, you reflect it over the x-axis, and we have the x-axis highlighted here so that you make sure that you remember that you're reflecting it this direction because the reflection makes a big difference if you're reflecting it over the x or over the y. So I can tell just by looking at this simple example that my volume did not just get two times larger. But if I break it apart, it looks like my volume actually got eight times larger. It's eight times larger than my original figure. A new volume of 30 inches cubed. If those examples went smooth for you, I want you to go ahead and move on to example number three. If not, make sure that you take some responsibility, rewind if you need to, watch those parts again. We're going to go ahead, pause the video now while you work example number three. First example, six times the quantity of y minus one plus eight equals 32. Referring to our steps, distribute first. Six times y minus six times one. This will simplify to six y minus six. And we bring down the plus eight equals 32. Now step two, clear the equation of any fractions. We don't have any. So we go to step three. 